Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Everybody, it's the Ramble. It's me, it's Alex Bennett. And we'll be here until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, sir. Guess who it is? Our old pal. Yes, Larry Bubbles Brown. Yay. Mr. Fun. Mr. Fun. Lots of laughs. <laughs> we probably should introduce you to people who don't know who you are. I am your longtime friend and stand-up comedian. Yes. And, and uh, yeah. I've known you for, let's see, I did your first show in January of 83. So what's that? Uh, I've had 40 years, God. 40 years we've wow. known each other. Boy. And I thought I knew my friend Jackie a long time, which was about 45, 46, something like that. I don't know. I haven't, we haven't figured it out exactly. You know, but uh, yeah, the guy I wanted to meet uh, sounds like an amazing man. Yeah, but I've known you such a long time, really. That's amazing. I just didn't realize it was forty years. God, I didn't realize it was either. Well, I think this should be the end of it then. <laughs> I think enough before is, somebody gets hurt. Enough is enough already. Yeah, you know? but uh, so how how's your uh, how's your life going? It has stopped raining, so I guess that's all we can hope for. It's good. We had uh, yeah. a small series of earthquakes, so maybe something's going to happen. Well, that's good. Earthquakes are always fun. I keep saying earthquakes are fun, and people look at me like I'm crazy. But you know what I'm talking about? Uh, they can be fun, yes. Yeah. But Building they, sways. and uh, Yeah, they, they sway, and you go, oh, wow, oh, wow. It's like going, it's like going on an amusement park ride, you know? Yeah, the one we had in 89 was not that much. You, your place almost got destroyed, but oh, that but wasn't the, too much fun. I keep telling people this. The best sex I ever had was the night of the earthquake. <laughs> and I called it, I, I named it a rubble fuck. And, and, and I've, I, I've mentioned this also any number of times, that I talked to a psychologist years later, and I said, you know, uh, right after the earthquake, uh, uh, while the fire engines are going and the smoke is in the air and uh, everything's going crazy and buildings have fallen and I'm in the middle of it, my girlfriend and I had amazing sex. And he said to me, that's not uncommon, that we want to survive the species. And so, therefore, our immediate reaction is to have sex. Wow. Yeah. That kind of makes sense. So I figure... We go to places like, oh, I know, Ukraine must be some great sex. <laughs> well, right yeah, now. war, sure. Yeah. Or, uh, 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 oh, how about, where was that earthquake? Syria, you know? Mm -hmm. We should go to Syria. We should run tours, what we call our sex tours, right? In which um, uh, people, we take them to countries where they can have a rubble fuck, basically. Yeah. You know. we got to get better predicting earthquakes. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, what is that? Something's going ding around here. I think it's my wife's computer. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Anyway, uh, um, uh, I, I uh, oh, there it goes again. I can't turn it off either. Oh, wow. Can you hear that? Uh, no. Oh, okay, well, as long as you can't hear it, it doesn't matter. Um, because she was doing some stuff earlier here, and I think it's the guy who's trying to get a hold of her. But anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. So I, I figure that is going to bother me. Jeez almighty. Well, you got a uh, very sh shortage of earthquakes in New York. I don't know if they've ever had them or there or not. I've heard rumors. But... Well, we have a fault that goes right through Central Park, which I'm right near. 
and there is a fault. And a few years ago, we did have a slight tremor here. We didn't. I, nobody felt it. Nobody knew what it was, bro. Yeah, they thought it was just the subways again. <laughs> you know, basically, we've done so much stuff to the uh, the earth under us that we feel stuff we shouldn't have to feel. You know, so we we couldn't tell the difference between an earthquake and a. Uh, um, um, a subway car. So that's it. Yeah, I'm through. I've said it all. I don't have to say any more. Anyway, so we could uh, have. Uh, I love the natural disasters, tornadoes. Oh, um, well, I don't know. The trouble is, if you're in a tornado area, you have to have sex in a um, a trailer. <laughs> uh, and and uh, that that's not that's that, that's not conducive, you know. Because you know during an earthquake, what do you always hear? You know, trailers getting destroyed, trailer parks decimated. I think somebody once referred to it as God's bowling alley. <laughs> and you pick up the spare. <laughs> yeah, and 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 then you see this person beside this this what was a trailer going. My home is gone. Well, to begin with, it's not a home. It's a trailer. All right? It's it's a place where you reside. All right? And that's making it sound too fancy. Uh, yeah, they, they but, don't have a foundation. That's why they kind of get thrown around. But you should come to realize that if the only thing holding your uh, abode uh, to the ground is a garden hose... You know, you got problems, right? So don't sit there crying that the the, tra- the tornado came and turned your trailer upside down. Of course it would, you know? So am I being too uncaring about these people? Yeah, because some people can't afford a home, so they go. Then, then I don't know, move into an apartment, you know? Of course, then the they apartment... They afford those anymore, so... Yeah, you know what? How, how much are how much are apartments going for in San Francisco right now? Don't think it's as bad as it was. But I think it's uh, I hit three to four thousand. It's not uncommon. Yeah, that's what it is here. In New York City is horrible. I I watch this thing. It's it is this guy named Cash Jordan, who does these tours every day through apartments in New York City, and then tells you how much they cost. And some of these things go up to fifteen thousand dollars a month. Jesus, and I'm going, geez, Almighty, you know. Um, and and but the average one is somewhere I would say in the area of four thousand dollars, five thousand dollars. You want a decent one, decent two bedroom, let's say. Uh, it's five thousand, uh, and it's 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 amazing. It's just amazing. Now, even this apartment, if we were to pay what the landlord wanted out of us, taking it to a rent stabilized uh, price, is only twenty two twenty five. Now, really? Yeah, I'm paying five hundred for it. Wow. Yeah, I'm paying. You a better deal than I do. Jesus. Well, no, because I got a court. Uh, there was a court uh, case. And the judge determined that they had to roll back the price to 2003. And that was $500.07 a month. They'll be able to raise it next uh, December when they give us a new lease. Uh, and I hope we get it. We're supposed to get one. It's almost automatic. Uh, they can raise it a certain percentage. So maybe it'll go up $8 or something like that. You know, But, I mean... Uh, the 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 average price that I see on these things is somewhere ranging in the four thousand forty five hundred dollar range, you know. So you got to be making a quarter million a year to afford something like that. You, you got to make a lot of money to to live in in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are some cheaper rents. I think I may have the cheapest rent in New York City. I mean, you, you might, know, yeah, yeah, because uh, even with rent controlled apartments. There's a difference between rent controlled and rent stabilized. Rent control goes back uh, to people may have had their apartment since the 30s and then they could under rent control will it to somebody else. 
Okay, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That, that was uh, rent control. Rent stabilized, which came in, I don't know, 50, 60, something like that, establishes a rent that can only raise so much every couple of years. And it's different, and, and you don't have that same right to take your apartment and will it to somebody else. Once you go, it's it's fair game for the guy who owns the apartment. So New York must have had the first rent control in the country. I think they had the first they may have had the first rent control. You know, it's strange. I have had of course I had a, a lawyer in this whole case that we had. Uh and he, the lawyer was telling me that his specialty, of course, is landlord-tenant law. He said, I don't represent landlords because I think that's a conflict if I'm representing the tenants. So uh, he said that when he goes to, like, lawyer conventions, I would love to see one of those. Um, <laughs> you know, um you know, it's like one the old lawyer joke. One lawyer is talking with another lawyer, and they see a beautiful woman walk by, and he says, "Oh, I screwed that." He said, "For how much?" You know. Anyway, uh, the uh, what, where were we? Uh, rent control. Rent control. Yeah. So I mean, there's a difference between rent control and stabilized. We're stabilized here, and most of the apartments in this building are rent stabilized. Uh, but it, it's uh, but oh, our, but our lawyer said he went to conventions. That was it. He went to conventions. He tell them he was a tenant landlord lawyer, and they'd say, "Wow, what's that?" Because th th it's unheard of anywhere else in the country. If you try to look up uh, landlord tenant lawyers in San Francisco, you might have a hard time finding one that specializes in that. But he said here in New York. It's a specialty because the landlords are so terrible and so horrible. Yeah, I've heard stories about that they've actually performed arson <laughs> so they can start anew and get rid of their rent control. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, they're, they're terrible. They're just terrible. Uh, and, uh, you know, like ours feels he has some kind of divine right as a, as a landlord uh, to do anything he wants to do. So, I mean, like, you know, the, the judge came out with the determination in our case, and so they immediately went and appealed it, and they went to an appeals court, and the appeals court said, well, you're full of crap. Go back to the, your, you know, I'm sending it back to the original uh, judge uh, because there's no case here for you to appeal, and uh, it let this thing stay. And that's about the last thing you can do is go to an appeals court, okay? There may be a couple other little things you could try, but they don't work. All right. They still refuse to recognize that I am the legal tenant of this apartment and that the apartment is at $504 a month. Yes, that's all I pay and that's all they really charge for the time being, but they still put there $2,225 uh, minus a credit, which brings it down to $500. Blah. Jesus. And we're, we're, we're trying to get them to take that off of there. You know, don't, don't tell us that, you know, that's the rent. That's not the rent. You've been legally told. And they go, well, it, it's not settled yet. Well, he went, he went to the appeals court. Of course it's settled. That's what I'm talking about, New York lawyers. I mean, yeah. New York uh, landlords. Yeah. That, that thing went on for years. Oh. God, it went on for nine years, maybe almost ten. <laughs> cost us cost us a hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Jesus! All right, <laughs> I think that's longer than the trial and the so, onion. Field. So when when you go, folks, when you go, oh, okay, you have a great rent. I wish I had that rent. Yet yeah, you wish you also had to put out one hundred seventy five thousand dollars to get it that low. You know. Yeah, that would pay for a lot of rent right there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, you know, I mean, if we cut it down and separate it over the last, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, nine, ten years, it comes out to about $1,800 a month. So I, that's acceptable. What that dinging? Marjorie, do something about your computer. God, it's driving me nuts. Anyway. Well, San Francisco's had rent control since 79. Uh, so. 
Since 79, rent control? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they don't have anything called rent stabilized out there. No, I mean, it's different from New York, but uh, I do know, like, if I were to leave the building, then the rent control goes off it, and they can charge whatever they want for the next tenant. You can't. You can't pass it on down like you can in New York, apparently. Well, no, well, yeah, but it, it, it's a different kind of rent control probably than the rent control we had here. But, I mean, the rent control we had here, a person on the first floor that we know whose mother left, she was born in that apartment, okay? And her mother, when she died, her mother left it to her. And she could do that because it's a rent-controlled apartment. And she can then will it to her children, and her children can will it to their children. That's a real asset. Yeah, but you can't with uh, rent stabilized. And there are very few rent-controlled apartments left in New York, you know. So. But there are quite a few. In this building, I think there are about maybe 20 of them, I think. Really, pretty good. I mean... I know that the landlord is every day. He's they're very religious. They're Hasidim. They're probably saying prayers for our death. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I'm sorry, but the prayer for the dead is the Kaddish, not the get out of our apartment. You know. I mean, it's amazing. It's just amazing. They, might, they could put a hit on you. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, uh, we're not. Listen, we're not giving up this apartment. You know, we're not even if I we got another apartment somewhere, or we got a house up up state or something like that. We're keeping this apartment. You know, it's well, fine. More and more cities are trying to get rent control. There's uh, out here. Oakland's got a very weak rent control. Santa Monica's got a really strong one. Yeah, and so then more cities are trying to get it. So it goes by the city. It doesn't. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, here, I think this is a statewide thing in New York. But, you know, I mean, it, 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 he, it, the lawyer said that he, he has a big business just dealing in people are getting screwed by their lawyers. You know, I mean, he said you couldn't get that in any other state. I mean, I'm sure tomorrow if you had a problem with your landlord and with the rent and so on and so forth, you really wouldn't know where to go. Would you? No, they have, uh, they have like, not te- lawyers that special. They do have some like uh, groups that you can go to, but I don't know how effective they are. Yeah, but, yeah. But you wouldn't even know how to start. You know, no. here everybody knows who the lawyer is. Somebody, everybody knows a lawyer who deals in rent uh, and tenant law. You know, landlord and tenant law. But uh, so <clears throat> that's well, sometimes they'll offer you a lot of money to leave. I guess they would. But I, I don't know how much they would have to offer me to make me leave at this rate, you know? Somebody said the record last year in San Francisco, they paid somebody 400000 400000 to leave their apartment? It was a big, gigantic apartment, apparently, yeah. Well, this is a gigantic apartment. This is 2,500 square feet. There, most people live in homes that are smaller. You, that's twice as big as a lot of homes. So, that's, yeah, it's huge. Yeah, this is 2,500 square feet. So you wouldn't leave for 400000 Um, <clears throat> I don't know what the price would be. You know, but then I have to find another apartment. Got to find a place to go. And then I'm going to have to pay $4,000, $5,000 a month rent and not even get the size I get here. Mm-hmm. You know, so, I mean, do you really want to do that? Do you really no. want to get rid of it? No. That is the biggest apartment I've ever heard of. It's pretty big. I mean, it's amazing. I, uh, I'm i always amazed by how big it is. Uh, and I, I mentioned, I think it was mentioned to Marjorie the other day that I said, I don't know if we could live anywhere but here because it's so big and we have so much room that, you know, like Marjorie's in another room now and if I wanted to walk to it, it'll take me about a half a minute, you know? I mean, yes. You know, so she's she's in another part of the house. She can't even hear me. Her phone, whatever, her computer was dinging, kept going off, and there was no way I could get a hold of her. Uh, outside, of, I could use my uh, my Alexa, you know, to make a announcement for the entire apartment. So, 
Yeah. Do you have people above you? No, we're on the top floor. Okay. God, that's great. Yeah, we're on the top floor. Uh, and the only noise I hear is the apartment next to us, which used to be part of this apartment. And I think they put up a wall here, which is flimsier than the rest of the walls in the apartment to separate us. And I can hear their kids screaming every now and then in there. But that's about it. I mean, wow. In our bedroom, what we have in our bedroom is we're on 116th Avenue on that side. Uh, and uh, there is a lot of traffic and a lot of noise at night, you know. I mean, people decide to start screaming at 2 o'clock in the morning. I don't know what that's all about. Yeah. So, it could yeah. be sex. Yeah, it could be sex, yeah. I, well, then I'm jealous, you know. But Anyway, so um, how's the comedy uh, business doing? Comedy has been a little, let's see, the last month wasn't bad. I don't have much for April till the, uh, I think the end of the month I got some work with Rob Schneider or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm dependent on my friends that got famous at this point, so. Yeah, well, I mean, they, but they like using you as an opener. That's true, yeah. You, you know why? I think you don't spoil the room. I don't, yes, I don't set it on fire, as they say. Well, I mean, nobody, there's certain acts nobody wants to follow. Like, you no. you don't want to follow a screamer, right? You wouldn't want to follow no, a screamer. You don't want to follow someone that has, puts an energy out that uh, it's the energy that's hard to follow. And uh, you don't want somebody that's super high energy. Well, that's how I often said that's how Bob Goldthwaite became a headliner. Yes, he was good, but nobody wanted to follow him because he was. Yeah, there are a lot of comics like that. I, I would say Bob Rubin was like that. He, it, he never opened, he just went from bartending the headlining yeah and the reason is nobody wants to follow them and it doesn't have to do with how good they are they could stink but if they're loud and noisy or another one people said they didn't want to follow was anybody who plays a guitar in his act a guitar act yeah for sure guitar act prop acts they're you hard don't to follow. want to follow a prop act yeah okay so if you pick any of those fields in comedy you'll automatically go forward go to headliner yeah, and I think you can. What is good to follow is somebody like uh, even low energy acts. They're not good to open a show, but they're easy to follow. Like uh, I would think Stephen Wright could kill, but you would still be able to follow him because he's low key. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I um, you know, I, I I always felt that when I was doing my shows, you know, I do have about five acts or whatever, and I always have to tell somebody you're going to open. And it might be somebody like you, or it might have been somebody like Warren Thomas. I remember we did it with Warren Thomas once, and Warren said to me, but I'm better than that. And I said, no. Yeah, they are always insulted. <laughs> I said, you don't understand how I set up a show. I want the second best comic to go on first, because I want the show to get off to a good start. I, I said, I don't tell anybody, but I bury the worst comic in the middle. Sure, and that's why most comedy clubs never understood that. They always the MC is the person with the least experience, exactly. the worst act. So, when you open a show with an act that's not that good, I think people are thinking, "God, did I make a mistake?" You know? Yeah, and and you know, I don't want to say that the people that I made as a middle act were terrible, but they just didn't have either the energy or whatever that the opening act would have. But otherwise, in clubs, they have the worst act start first and be the yeah. MC, then the second funniest act be whatever, and then of course, what they consider the headliner, the headliner. Uh, it was a, it was a terrible way to do a show. You should have a really good comic. Your second your second best comic be the headline, be the uh, MC. That's yeah. that tired. Apparently, Mitzi Shore came up with that format that's been around for 50 years, and I never thought it was good. And the only city that to buck that was Boston. Boston used to have the headliner would open the show, and would he would do 20 minutes, then he'd introduce the other three acts. They do shorter sets, and then he would close the show with another 20 or 25. Well, in vaudeville, the the uh, headliner. The, the best act, the, the star of the show, went on second to last. 
The second to last was what they called a chaser. Really? Yeah, it allowed people to leave before it was over if they wanted to. You know, so it was something like a juggler or whatever. But if the headliner was always the act before the final act. I didn't know that. That was in vaudeville. Uh, so, I mean, there was a certain wiseness to all of that. Intelligence and... and but, yeah, I, I didn't know Mitch C. Short Shore started the current lineup. The, the, the three-act uh, show, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, well. Yeah, she wasn't, she wasn't that great. Anyway, <laughs> hey, hey, I just saw... I we, never met her, but I heard she was a little crazy. Yeah, we're running out of time here, kiddo. <laughs> we sure are. And I'll, I'll talk to you again next week. You got it. <laughs> Larry Bubbles Brown, folks. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yes, folks. Okay. All righty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Uh, Larry Bubbles Brown. I love Larry. Hey, listen, I got to tell you, I did a couple interviews today. I did about three of them, actually, with one person. Um, uh, there's a guy that used to do my radio show, and a lot of people who are from the Bay Area. Uh, probably remember him. His name was Chuck Farnham. And I haven't really talked to Chuck for maybe 25 years or something like that because we had a falling out uh, at one point. And we've since made up. And so I called him today and we did uh, about three half hour interviews, 25 minute interviews that you'll hear over the next three weeks on Wednesdays that I think you will really enjoy because it gives you an, a look inside the kind of stuff we did in San Francisco radio and some of his remembrances of it. And also he backs me up on a claim of mine, which uh, you'll, well, when we play them, you'll, you'll hear them, okay? Anyway, it is time now for us to bring in our, uh, our uh, uh, citizen panel, which right now amounts to literally only three people but they're three good people it's kevin it's charlie and uh it's uh it's uh josh hi uh, all of you how are you doing good oh okay i just wanted somebody to say something so i know yeah that. yeah, yeah. Uh, i just i i just just because i'm awake doesn't mean i'm ready to do things <laughs> Yeah, I tr I should wear that for my wife, you know. First thing she says to me every morning is, "Hey, let's make the bed." You know, and I don't want to make the bed the first thing when I wake up in the morning. I want to lie in it for a while. But no, let's make the bed. Come on, let's make the bed now. Her, let's hurry up. So anyway, uh, enough about my wife. Yeah, I love her anyway. Uh, but anyway, how you how how. You, how y'all doing? Um, what is what's happening? I you know I I haven't watched much news today at all. Was there anything of any great import that we should know about? Well, didn't they overrule the the uh, abortion pill? Uh, I, I, there's something. There was something that happened where some judge somewhere, in Texas, yeah. yeah, in Texas said that the abortion pill was not legal. And uh, so now they're going to have to, I, get, I don't know what, what happens from here, okay? I mean, it's just nutty. It's getting so nutty, I just don't even, Yeah. Uh, God, you know. I mean, if, if I had more years to live, I mean, a great deal more years, like say I could look forward to another 25 or 30 years, I'd be leaving this country so fast you'd see my shadow. You know, there's an active shooter at the University of Oklahoma. Oh my God, I just, hadn't heard that. Just just popped up on on. Uh, come on, CNN. come on, come on, Alan. It's no big no, deal. It, no big deal. There's a shooting every oh, day like that. Every day, yeah. Yeah, no, it's yeah. no big deal. No. Okay. No, that's no. the American way of life now. Yeah, I guess so. You know, and then you got a bunch of people uh, like the. Uh, uh, state legislature down in Tennessee who doesn't want to do anything about it, but they want to take a bunch of people who were protesting the use of guns and throw them out of the uh, out of the uh, legislature. Le legislature. I mean, come on. You know, 
I, I, I'm getting so sick of this. It's ridiculous. It makes no sense at all, you know? So, uh, anybody? <laughs> no. What's that? Anybody want to pick up the, uh, the mantle here and run with it? Well, I was just reading this op-ed in the Washington Post that criticizes Mitt Romney pretty much the same exact way I was criticizing him yesterday. Well, so. uh, why did he suddenly become such a chicken, you know? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, yeah. I just happened to see it when I logged on here to see what was up, and uh, I think that's funny. Maybe. Well, what I uh, thought was the most hilarious thing was Lindsey Graham going on Hannity and several other shows begging for money for Donald Trump. Everybody, send him some money. And I'm going... If you've got a dollar or five dollars... Or, or ten or cents anything. Or, or a penny or a sou or a whatever. Or Frank. A, yeah. Uh, by just, the way, you're the only one on YouTube if you, if you oh, care. You know something? You're absolutely correct. I do this all the time now. I hate myself. Okay, there we go. We got your back. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Send him your pennies like Patrick does Peter Popoff or whatever. <laughs> yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I have, not much. <laughs> not Stephen much. Colbert did a, a really funny comparison between Lindsey Graham crying for money and, and uh, 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 Jimmy Schweiger, oh. the televangelist. Yeah. Well, you know who's been pretty good this week? I've been watching these people who are kind of auditioning for The Daily Show. Yes. And they've had a guy on this week who I think is really good, Roy Wood Jr., a comedian. And yeah. he's really been good. And they had a woman yesterday doing a thing about all this crying for money for Trump. And I, if you can find it on YouTube, it's very funny. But, I mean, what, what do we... I said this yesterday, I said it the day before, and I'll probably say it in the next week. Which one of you idiots out there is sending your money to an alleged, I say alleged, billionaire? Yeah. But even if he isn't a billionaire, let's say he's just a, a, a 500 millionaire, okay? <laughs> he still doesn't need your goddamn money. Sits on a gold toilet seat. Why are you sending him money? Exactly. Yeah. If he's crapping in a gold crapper, then you don't need to send him money. Dumb shit. I mean, why do they do it? I don't understand. It doesn't make <clears> sense <throat> to me. And then Lindsey Graham is going, "Oh, you've got to send him money for his for his court case." Hey, he brought this. He brought this court case on himself. Okay. I don't know. And he should have to pay to get out of it. I mean, doesn't. I mean, there are people definitely. I'm sure sending him money, though. I mean, I'm sure there there are people that are. I mean, I sent Kevin and Patrick a picture a little bit ago that I forgot to do earlier today from my drive through the neighborhood this morning. Go to the end of the street. What are they flying on their flag pole? No American flag. Uh, support the police flag and a Trump flag and a one nation under God flag. Turn right, go to the next stop sign, pass two houses with the same shit. <laughs> you know? Well, did you see the one they showed on the news of the truck going down oh, that street? Oh, by, in the, New York? by the way, I got to get Chuck Farnham's name out of here. Uh, this was from what I did today. The only, okay. it said the only American or the original American flag truck, and it had like six flags on it, four Trump flags. An American flag and uh, 2024 it, flag, and it was flying on this pickup truck going down the street in New York. There. Well, if you the guys want to make through. any real money, there seems to be money in these flags. Uh, well, I mean, those are some pretty big flags they're flying. When I was in Arizona, we were getting <laughs> onto an on ramp of the freeway, and there was a whole guy, a guy sitting there on the back of his pickup truck. He had a whole booth set up. Yeah. With well, did you did you ever flags? All kind of yeah. shit. I was about ready to run by him and, you know, stir up a bunch of <laughs> I mean, did you ever stop at that, if you went through Kingman, did you ever stop at that last truck stop that we were talking about that one night where I told you they had, like, the three aisles of shit in there that you could walk up and down with a shopping cart? Oh, oh no. The one on the <laughs> outside of Kingman? No. Yeah, yeah. The So, like, yeah, if you're headed east, it's, like, the first thing you come to after you, you cross from Nevada into Arizona, and then you go maybe like 20 miles. Oh, yeah, right I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, it's that, like, they call it the last truck. It's that. It's like the last thing in Arizona before 
Because then there's nothing until you go across the reservoir and all that. Yep. The Hoover yep. Dam. And but then, where do they know, where do they yeah. get these things? I mean, the big ass flag company. <laughs> they just have them made. You can have them made. But I mean, but this place is like a superstore. I mean, not just flags. I mean, this was like, I mean, towels and I mean coasters. And I, I mean, it was like a fucking Cincinnati Bengals pro shop, except Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I think Trump <laughs> toilet is there is Trump toilet paper, isn't there? Where you can wipe yeah, your ass. probably yeah. Uh, that's you, at the you, Democrat you, store though. You, you, yeah. yeah, you can wipe your ass with Trump, you know. But I mean, it's it, 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 these huge, giant flags. Yeah. So we should. Make I know some... they're flying in my neighborhood. I'm aware. <laughs> yeah. We've got really? them here too. <laughs> yeah, I took a couple pictures for those guys this morning on my way to the store. Well, we don't have them here in New York City because they wouldn't last very long. Yeah, probably not. You know. But why, here. why don't we make big, big Trump flags that are anti-Trump? Oh, we've got the. Uh, I the think I've seen one Trump. here and there, but yeah. Sorry, oh, we got see? the F Biden flags hanging off some house. Yeah, right. Are really, are these pro Biden or are these anti Biden? F Biden. That's oh. all it says is F Biden. The F Biden. I don't want to get you demonetized, so I won't use the whole oh, word. Okay. All right. F dot dot dot. Gee, what yeah. Happened, what happened to my <laughs> soda? I I got myself some soda. And I didn't bring it in, and now I'm going to get thirsty during the show. Huh. You can go get it. I'll go get it. You guys talk for a second. Okay. <laughs> no, we got oh, no, we have plenty of those flags here. I don't I know. Found it. I found it. Wasn't that a quick trip to the uh, bath, the oh, kitchen yeah. for me? Yeah, it wasn't bad. Yeah. You would find, find it. it. I mean, I see them in garages when the garage doors are up and I drive by. They're hanging on the wall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I mean, it's, I mean. I mean, those things must cost. Kind of, it. That's, why, that's what I've been saying for a while is if people thought any of this stuff was going to mean he couldn't get, you know, the nomination or whatever, it's, it's not going to change anything. It's, nothing is going to change those people. Yeah. Nothing. Do you think he's going to get the nomination? I mean, I don't really know which way they're going to go, but... I, I honestly would say, I think probably because I don't see anyone, I don't see anyone doing anything to, about it. They're not changing their There's minds. There's no move, you know, as much as we think you he's going to do it, there's no move on the part of DeSantis to run. Right. And that's, there's no I mean, sign that's that he's running. Saying. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> and like I said, I, I don't think that any of the, you know, the other people, are going to really appeal to anyone much because I mean that's that's what we've been talking about. I don't I don't see someone like Nikki Haley as a as an option. I, she's just another low life like him who who sucked his ass as much as she could. Right? I mean, you, you know, I mean, you know, but yeah, uh, but yeah. she kicks she kicks sideways or, or she kicks forward. So I don't know. Maybe you know. I mean, it's it's, <laughs> it's all nonsense with them. But so. I don't see anything that's going to like change the hardcore party's mind. And my understanding is the way that their primary system works, which I think pretty much the same as Democrats, is that, you know, he doesn't have to get a lot of Republicans to like him. He just needs to get like 20% or whatever, you know, depending on how many people are running. Well, so, if nobody decides to turn out, not that bad. if nobody decides to turn out for the, the Republican primaries, all you have to win is a majority. And it can right. be a majority I mean, from saying. a... He, he yeah. doesn't, you know, you know, if there's 150 million Republican, registered Republicans in this country, he doesn't need 100 million of them. He probably needs 15, you know, I mean, which is... You well, know? you've also got the pie being cut up among five different guys well, and so on that's what so I'm so saying, you know, yeah. is, I mean, yeah. you know, and, he, you know, he has pockets of the country like where I live, where, I mean, none of those people here are going to vote for DeSantis. I mean, like I said, they're still flying as flags. I don't see any DeSantis flags when I drive around the neighborhood, right? Now, where are these flags coming from? Are these being self-generated, or are these being generated yeah. by the Trump organization? No, they, they buy them on the internet, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can have them made, and then somebody goes out and has them made, and then he sells them. And they, well, they, they make sell them. Money. They sell them in, like, they, I mean, you can buy them on the internet, but they sell them in, like, Swap meets, flea markets. Let, well, let's yeah. be honest. Guys on the let's, side let's, of the road. Let's, you be, know? let's yeah. be honest about who this constituency is. They're not wealthy, are they? They're not so, wealthy not really. people. 
So where are they getting all this money for these flags? They're spending whatever little money they have for dinner on these goddamn flags. Well, they go and they 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 spend the money on the initial flags, and then they make money off of their other buddies buying the flags, mm -hmm. just like Trump does, only on a smaller level. Yeah. It's just like counterfeit NFL shit. Yeah. It's the same same thing, only they're just using Trump to make their money. Yeah. Wow. Well, so you can have these things made. I mean, I know somebody that does it with, you know, NFL stuff. He goes out and has his 49er crap made <clears throat> by some company in China and they ship them back over for a dime a dozen and then he sells them for 15 bucks each. <laughs> but it's just amazing to me that his constituency is not wealthy. Okay? I think we no. could probably, you know, they're pretty much trailer folk. Uh, right. And, and, you know, they'll spend their last 15 bucks on a Trump flag. That's the, and that's, that's the yeah. idiocy of it all. You Just know? so they can put it on their front porch. And nobody yep. is more willing, no, Johnson, nobody Johnson. is more willing to fleece the last penny out of these people than Donald Trump. <laughs> you know, yeah. buy my little, what were those, those non fungible tokens that he was selling? Yeah. Because he's the savior. Is he really? Christ, well, did savior. you hear Marjorie Taylor Greene? He said, likened him to Christ. Yeah. 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 Because Christ was convicted. Well, you know, then. So Arrested. Then, huh? Arrested. 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 Well, well, you know, so so are a lot of different people out there that have been arrested in time. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, as an example. I think he's, he could be compared to De Jeffrey Dahmer on some levels, couldn't he? Yeah, that's what I've always said all along. It's, it's like a cult. I, you know, I just, I don't understand it. It makes no sense to me. You know, uh, and I'm talking about just having a purely rational mind. Forget the left or right, but just being rational. Well, one thing that I have heard die down is uh, going after Alvin Bragg and, uh, you know, saying that, that they're just kicking on Donald Trump. But ever since I heard this statement, the right has, totally abandoned that ploy, and that is that Alvin Bragg has been in office for 14 months, and he has filed 117 lawsuits similar to the ones, the charges against Trump. Right, so he isn't just uh, uh, um, uh, singling him out, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, you know, I mean, plus, you know, this thing has been going on for a long time that they've been looking into this. It's not like it's something new. And the only thing that shielded him from getting any, into any problems before was he was president. And a re one of the reasons he became president, I'm just sure of, is to protect him from what he perceived as being some court actions that might take place against him because of his business practices in New York State. And by becoming president, he felt that shielded him from, you know, from indictment on these charges. And, and he's thinking the same thing. He says, if I'm president again, they'll have to wait another four years before they can finish this case. Well, I think they can continue the case while he's president. Did you raise your hand, Charlie? Yeah, I was just going to point out that all of these people, Lindsey Graham, Marjorie Taylor Greene, none of them are claiming that Trump didn't do it. They're all claiming it's just a political witch, witch hunt. But they not one of them has come forth and even claimed, but Trump didn't do it. You know, well, know that he did it. Well, we don't know that he did it. Okay, we want to see in court it to be proven and so on and so forth. Of course, personally, we all think he did it, right? <laughs> we yeah. know that uh, that. What's it? Then Cohen went to went to prison for three years for the same crime. Well, Cohen, like yeah. He, well, he didn't go for three years, but he was sentenced Whatever to three years. Yeah. yeah, he was sentenced to three. Weisselberg years. was convicted. And Weisselberg, yeah, yeah, all for the same crime. For the same all, crime. That they're, they're, uh, well, they were protecting. Uh, what were they, what did they call him? Uh, 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 Co-conspirator co number one. Co-conspirator number one. Yeah. Well, if he was a co-conspirator, I guess you know we got a problem here, right? Uh, I don't know. I I give up. I give up on this country. 
It's crazy. crazy really. But the Trump the Trump flags are when that Fourth of July last year, we went up to um, Lake Don Pedro, and it would be there, and all of a sudden, some boats come up with these huge Trump flags and the F Biden and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and we're just all staring at them, going that. I'm when I'm in Lodi. There's a bunch of Trumpers up Didn't there. Didn't you just yell it, out to it, them? Been... Didn't you just yell out to them? Hey guys, it's vacation time. Yeah. You and know? Then, and, and, and Lodi, Lodi, you know, it's it's the Central Valley, and you've All got the big the... trucks, the big trucks with the two big flags, you know, just All going over like, the place. I, just yeah, it's like out of the blue. It's like really, it's like. They're all over the Central Valley because Tom- that's yeah. that's McCarthy that's McCarthy territory. Uh, uh, Tony, yeah, me and my sister were walking in, in Middle Village, and I saw, I saw we saw flags. Biden, the quicker fucker upper. I mean, I'm telling you, F. Biden. This is so. And he brought out so much anti-American stance. Like even though we didn't like Trump, I never saw people hang flags out like F. Trump. Well, let me let me say something that I don't like saying and that is when I was a boy uh, that's the part I don't like to say when I was a boy you didn't do this to the president of the United States even if you thought he was a piece of crap you know it's like do you ever think you'd see Alex your country act like this like we didn't say you didn't like Trump but you never what what you did it wasn't wrong to disagree with the president it wasn't wrong to feel that he was doing stuff wrong, but it was wrong to insult him. You would think, okay, right? to to insult him in the, or to use the f word against the president. You know, but but we're yep. in this we're in this life now that it's not like your opinion's wrong. It's not it's not like oh you know the the Cincinnati Bengals oh I like the Eagles. It's not like that anymore. It's like no the Cincinnati Bengals are are idiots and f them and you know just throwing all the bombs on them instead of respecting that people have another opinion. Well, I mean, we, yeah, it's horrible. It's horrible what we've become. And we used to wear ties on planes, and now people wear their pajamas on the damn thing. Well, wow. and to school, <laughs> and to school, you know, and to school, and to school, yeah, and to Home Depot. And the whole people. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Yep. Yeah. You know what I think it is more than anything? And just I told this to my sister because she's a school teacher. I says, Nan, you know what it is? He brought out the racists. They're oh, alive no, and well. No, and he, them, he, did, he did worse than that. What he, he gave did, them an empowerment he, to come he, out. He gave them uh, he gave them uh, a uh, what's the word I was looking for? Permission. A, you know. a sense of permission. Yeah, like, come right, on, bro. come on out now. You can open the door now and let everyone well, you hate out because I'm a door. Right, I got you back. You're right. And you know, of all the things I've heard you say, you're right with that because all these guys were in the woods. They were in the woods. He's like, come on out, fuckers. Safe now. They were practicing their gunshots and everything else. And all they all sudden, thought like, come on out. like racism, racism changed or homophobia or anything. It didn't change. He empowered them to come out. It's all right now. Yep, he said, I'm in charge come on out. I'm, I got your back. And they but, came but out with it's, vengeance. It's, but it's like that for a lot of these groups. You know, a lot of these weird groups that were hidden, the internet has brought them out because the internet yeah. has said, wow, I'm not this crazy guy in California, but you know what? There's another crazy guy yeah, in New York, that's a good point, another yeah. crazy guy in Texas, and now we can get along and say, wow, there's more, and they try to make that grow. So a lot of these that's weird, yeah. weird well, things, I, I like, always call, the internet is really blowing it up. I always had called it giving a sense of permission. I always said that the worst thing I could do as a broadcaster was to give anybody in my audience a sense of permission to act in a certain way that was not right, you know? And what he did is he gave them that sense of permission. Yeah. He opened it way open and said, hey, hey you, can be, you can be as uncivilized as I am. Yeah. Okay? It's I mean, like crazy. You and think they say it because they, they, they back it up. They said, look at what, uh, I, I like what Donald Trump's doing. I'm going to do it too. It's I'm, I'm not even them living in that type of like reality. Like it's like wow, you know, it's it, scary it, to see it up close. Like it's, and then I'm embarrassed by it. The other one that kind of mystifies me is they keep saying, oh, "Well, things were much better under Donald Trump. He had this problem solved or that problem." That's what? all. What he didn't do anything while he was in office except just do whatever benefited Donald Trump. Otherwise, he didn't do rich. anything. What? Tax cut for the rich. Well, yep. I don't even know if he did that that well, you know. But um, it's uh, it's disgusting. 
It's they saw their 401ks going up and they thought he did that. He didn't do that. Actually, they Obama thought... did that because it was it was the slingshot after Obama. Presidents really don't have anything to do with the stock market. It, it, bottom line, you're absolutely right. Yeah, they, it has it has nothing to do with it. They well, just well, he they're blaming they're just there when it's happening. They're blaming the uh, the uh, inflation on Biden. He yeah. has nothing to do with inflation. Inflation is a is a actually is a result of greed. Yeah, you're right. You want to yeah, and what we're going through now is a bubble that was supposed to burst sooner or later, and it could have burst when Trump was in office. And what would have happened then? Well, their, their price you know, it's just a bubble. Listen, that was bound listen. To burst. If it happened during Trump, Trump, he wouldn't have known what to do. If Ukraine had happened during his watch. Oh. He wouldn't have known what to do. In fact, the only thing he would have done is he would have called Putin up and said, what do I do? Oh, yeah, no, well, he, he would have, he would have turned around and blamed Obama for it, is what he would have done. I can't help this. This happened because Obama So did. are we saying that, gone backwards. that Trump was excellent as a president for assigning blame? Uh, exactly. Well, it's always like that, I think, in yeah. business. Oh, it's always like that. Signing, signing what? grievances. What did you say, uh, Charlie? Anything that went wrong was always somebody else's fault. That's right. Yeah. It's Festivus. It's the airing of grievances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just don't, I don't understand it. And, and uh, I, I, it gets more mystifying every day. You know, who's Matt Sheridan? No, that's not somebody I oh, want to talk to. That, yeah, he's Matt. Matt on. On. Was he okay? Yeah, he's been oh, a... Matt from the chat. Uh, oh, oh, give him a second to see if he. Yeah. Matt, is that you? Oh, well, wait a minute. Are Hold on a second. Let me get my finger on my get camera. Get dressed, Matt. Here we go. Hey, he's on the oh, chat. Let's you see here. Uh, Matt Sheridan. There he is. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Matt. How are you? That's not him. No. Just oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, how's it going? Yeah, Matt, you got any thoughts on what we're talking about? Oh yeah, um, it was about Trump, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it was like I think he definitely gave like a megaphone to a lot of people who were basically in the closet for being racist and xenophobic, mm -hmm. and you know he just uh, there was also like a really online aspect to it. There was something called GamerGate in 2013 or something like that, and it was really this like misogynistic thing that galvanized a bunch of like impotent losers to really become more right wing and more misogynistic and they kind of galvanized towards Trump in 2016 so it was like something like Gamergate was something that was kind of like that was uh, that was uh, the precursor to Trump so a lot of these people became Trump supporters so it's like it was it was just um, I, I don't know though like if anyone can really unfortunately like he'll probably be the nominee I don't know <laughs> You know anyone else beating him he has like these stupid followers of him and the republican party doesn't even stand for anything anymore like they're like they're a bunch of neanderthals who just scream about how much they hate trans well, people well what's amazing to me is how many how many of these republicans absolutely in spite of the fact that they're not stupid okay refuse to go against trump they they think he has because some fundraising I don't know if it but I don't know if it has to do with that, Vernon. I think if you were the alternative candidate and you said, Look, Trump is not good for our party and that's why I'm running because I think we need better candidates for our party than the likes of Donald Trump, I think he would find a, an audience and a base. I think there are Republicans out there who are sick and tired of every day waking up to the latest tragedy of Donald Trump. You know, yes, Matt. It, it's interesting too, though, because he's proven to be like such a loser with the elections. You think that yeah. they would like move on from that? Yeah, this is a guy who's never won an election. I mean, he won, he became president, but he didn't win that election. He he lost it by about what five million votes or something against Hillary, three to five million votes. Yes. Yeah. So and yeah. he didn't win the one with uh, with Biden. Yeah. You know. So what makes him think he all of a sudden lightning is going to strike? And he's going to win. He's not any more popular today than he was then. You know, he didn't pick up any fans as a result. Uh, people are sick of him. 
He's tired of hearing from him. We're, we have Trump well, fatigue. For an electoral win again. What? I think the plan is is to get electoral colleges fixed yeah. through Supreme Courts and states. The yeah. electoral win. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well Texas and gerrymandering. Yeah. If Texas passed a law now that the Secretary of State can just decide if any any county that has more than a million people, they can say, I don't like that result of that election, I'll throw it out. Really? really? Yeah. That's just there you go. What happened, what happened to the Republican Party that believed in America and in the democracy and in the right to free speech and the right to vote and to have elections? What happened to that Republican Party? I mean, I They're remember gone. the Republican Party when I was a kid and like when I was a kid, there I go again. When I was a kid, the Republican Party was not my favorite party, but they weren't a bunch of douchebags, <laughs> you know. But now they're terrible. They they must wake up every morning and say, "What we can, what can we do today to piss people off?" Yeah. You know what gets me is it's the people who seem to be uh, fair-minded, like you described, who have become insane. Yes, that's what I. That's what blows my mind. Yeah. Like where they they just all flipped. Well, the ones that are fair minded aren't speaking up. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That could be it. That's true. That's or they lost the their election. They're afraid. Well, you know, paranoia about this government, okay, used to be the exclusive dominion of the ultra left. <laughs> okay? Yeah. We yeah. were paranoid about everything. All right? All of a sudden it's the Republicans. It's the ultra conservative or the MAGAs. I, the MAGAs don't come under any category. I can't call them conservative. I can't call them Republicans. I can't call them, of course, douchebags as usual with their leader, Al Douche. So, you know. <laughs> sure. Well, we all know that the, uh, that the policy that the Department of Justice has came about because of Spiro Agnew. Was it Spiro Agnew who created yes. this problem? Really? That's when that policy memo was written. Uh -oh. was when Spiro Agnew was getting into all the trouble, and they got him to resign, and and they got him to resign, and and he pleaded no contest to one misdemeanor, tax evasion misdemeanor, and they dropped all the other stuff just so he would resign and get out of the way because they saw this stuff coming on Nixon and they did not want him to assume the president. Oh boy, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, Matt? Yeah, I was gonna say though, um, the Democrats did win big in Wisconsin with the uh, that lady who won the court uh, yeah. the other day. Yep, and the Republicans are very upset about that because yep. now they can't turn over the election <laughs> yeah. uh, if it doesn't turn out their way with the Supreme Court in that state. Exactly. Right. Phil, Phil, we're, Phil, well, Phil, wait a minute. Phil, we're having a serious discussion here. If you want to join it in a <laughs> serious a manner, fine. <laughs> but, you know, uh, otherwise, take those teeth off, okay? Right out of the trailer. <laughs> right out, I mean, all of a sudden. I a lot of money for you. You know, teeth. all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you want, to, you want to draw attention to yourself rather than to join the group. I just figured I no. Uh, it was it. It's not right. Represent. It's not but right. That's what Chris fit the hat. Though. Represent. That's what Chris Rock said in his recent his recent special. Chris Rock said the problem with this country is that we're all addicted to attention. How many likes we get? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, um, okay. you, do you know that when you ask a kid today what do they want to do for a living? They say, I want to be an influencer. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> now, uh, I don't know where the auditions are for influencer, but please let me know. You know, what I happened would to love... firemen? Huh? Yes. You know what that is called, really? What? A bullshitter. <laughs> made bullshitter. My son's a made, he's bullshitting today. <laughs> yes, he's in the business of bullshitting. Yeah. And getting paid. Yeah. Or narcissism. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it's just it's it, it, it's just amazing that we yeah. have this uh, this all this going on. It's just not there's something not right here. There's something really bizarre, uh, and uh, it's 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 wrong. You know, I mean, I mean, let's put it this way. Let let's talk about if you write, oh, I don't know, parody, and I wrote a parody about somebody asking a politician getting on the air as Lindsey Graham did and crying that we should send money to a billionaire. Yeah. 
you get big laughs. Yeah. You know? I mean, of course, yeah. nobody's going to send Billy money to a billionaire. Lindsey Graham shed more tears for off. Trump than he did for any of the kids who died. Yeah. You know something? Dude. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. He is such a hypocrite, that Lindsey Graham. He's a scumbag. Well, you know something? I, I, I got to tell you this for a second. Uh, Al Franken took over The Daily Show for a week, and his first guest was Lindsey Graham. Yeah. And he said about Lindsey Graham, he said, when I get asked on the road and I'm asked uh, uh, by uh, groups, you know, we have like a, okay, you can now ask me some questions. The question always comes up, who do you think is the funniest senator? And he said, I always say Lindsey Graham and they don't believe me. <laughs> and Graham was on The Daily Show and he was very, very funny. Right, and oddly enough, oddly likable on that show. I mean, at one point he said, you know, he said, gee, I haven't got enough booze here today. How am I going to go back to Washington and be a Republican? You know, things like that. I mean, he was very funny. So I... Everybody hmm? everybody knows a good bullshit line. You used to, you used to tell us that about Huckabee. Yeah. 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 I oh, still yeah. can't believe that. Yeah, well, I mean, I found Huckabee to be very likable. I'm sorry, but I have a hard time believing well, that. Well, I know you have a hard time it. believing that because the Huckabee you see is oh, yeah. that other Huckabee. Okay. His daughter. Uh, oh, oh, she I'm is sure. like a... Oh, I'm sure. I mean, it's just that everybody has that other side. Why don't they fucking use it? Sorry. Well, I mean, Huckabee... We're going to monetize. <laughs> that's yeah, it. Yeah, but Huckabee... Um... Why don't they use it, though? That's what that's what bothers me, <clears throat> excuse me, about the politicians is, is they have that other side... That's there. Well, he's, but, but here's the thing: when, they should. when Huckabee was on with me, he knew who he was on with, and he wanted to. Um, oh, we were disconnected here for. A no, second. no, that's me. I'm sorry. I, I, no, I no, hit the no, keyboard. No, no this oh. was something here. Oh, oh okay. suddenly, I don't know why, but it, it said that we had been dropped. Uh, but uh, uh, the thing is that Huckabee was being on maybe on his best behavior with me, but he was very charming. And we had a good discussion, you know, uh, and that's the way I feel about Lindsey Graham. I mean, maybe there's this duplicity in, in Lindsey Graham where, you know, they're the two sides of Lindsey Graham and he chooses publicly to be on the bad side of Lindsey Graham. Uh, but, I mean, I found him on with, with Franken to be really quite amiable and fun. I know that you find that hard, but go, go to YouTube, watch the show he did with Franken. And I think you'll agree with me. You know, I mean, he's still a douchebag, but I mean. Policies are still horrendous. Huh? Oh, his policies are still horrendous, and he's standing up for Trump and is begging for money. Yes, Matt. I still uh, think one of the funniest things Trump's, uh, sorry, Al Franken said about one of his fellow senators was. Oh, yes, uh, yes. Tell because him. Because I, I like Ted Cruz more than anyone, and I hate Ted Cruz. Yeah. No, he said, I like Ted Cruz more than any other senator in Congress. Yeah. And I hate Ted Cruz. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what he great. said. All, yeah. all I wanted to say earlier was when you guys were talking is that I think Trump, uh, basically, uh, this go around, all his issues are self-inflicted. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, uh, put himself in a position where he may not be electable. Uh, and uh, right now he's the front runner, but very few people have declared that have any, um, any traction. Well, also, the others haven't yet really done anything to get traction. You know, well, Nikki, Haley you says, Nikki Haley says, I'm running, gives a speech, and that's the last we hear from her. You know, we she hear from him every would, day. She may be good vice presidential material, but I don't see her, uh, even though she was, uh, what, South Carolina governor and, and, and did a very good job, uh, as well as, uh, as an ambassador, stood up for, for the country and made Republicans like me proud. I just don't see her as presidential material. Uh, yes. Trump is presidential material, though. Uh, no, Trump, Trump served a purpose uh, when he ran. You know, uh, and but unfortunately, uh, instead of pivoting and becoming presidential, 
he uh, he kept stepping on his own feet and and putting his. Uh, he had no he had no other thing to do. He was uh, not smart enough to do that. Uh, and all did, of us realize that, but you don't. No, Vernon. Uh, what he did, I was very happy with, especially for the first three three and a half years. Uh, and, and the it only thing he did was give tax breaks to the rich and the corporations. Well, you and I have something in common, Phil, because I was happy with him from for the first three three and a half minutes. What's that? Oh, no, it, <laughs> wait know. a minute. Let let uh, 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 <laughs> our our good friend here, Alan, has had his hand up. So, so I just wanted to. I'm wondering. All of a sudden, Phil comes on the show, and he is not defending trump he's putting out all kinds of stuff so what drugs are you on phil <laughs> i ate a couple of dates with pits there you go dates with pits yeah, yeah. there's you know, a joke there I'm somewhere but i can't figure out what it is uh, that was, that's all i had yeah <laughs> it's, like, it's the sugar it's the it's sugar the maybe you should date women like everybody else phil boom boom What'd you say? Kentucky passed the medical marijuana bill. Ooh. Who who passed it? Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky. Oh, oh. yeah. Medical marijuana. Yeah. See, can, I'm I, I'm I'm against mar medical marijuana because so do I have to get do I have to get cancer in order to smoke this stuff in Kentucky? My primary physician said they should have gone all the way or not done anything. He said now they're putting this on the backs of physicians who have no experience with it. Yeah. Right. Vernon? Right. That's a good was point. Was it Kentucky or Tennessee that just had those three uh, state uh, Tennessee. 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 Yeah. Tennessee. Yeah. Uh -huh. Here's another good example of a Republican state. Okay. More than 50% of the registered voters in Tennessee are not Republicans, and yet the representatives in their legislature, they're 75 out of 100 Republicans. Well, how Why does that happen? That? So they gerrymandering, gerrymandering. Exactly. Is that yeah. what it is? Burn down the castle. What? What? Well, I, I don't see. I don't see why you can't put bring a federal lawsuit against a state that does that. Why can't you bring a federal lawsuit and say we're not having one man, one vote rule, which is what the Constitution of the United States is supposed to be founded on? One man, was, one vote. I thought it was a representative government. That's it is, but it's supposed to be. A representative government based on the percentage of people getting their representation and if you've got 50 percent of the state who are republicans and they've got 75 percent of the legislature that's not one man one vote so therefore they voted for them no, no the but math what, he, what, he's saying, what, what he's saying basically what he's saying is the math doesn't work okay if you it, and so how does that happen well gerrymandering is how that happens all right, but it happens. Yeah. It goes both ways. When no, it when, doesn't. No, it doesn't. Go no, what it do doesn't. you mean? What do you mean? It goes both if ways. If the Republicans well, when, have gerrymandered when, in their favor in Tennessee or in Kentucky, I, did you say, well, Vernon? Or yeah, in, in, the same way. In, in, in Kentucky and Tennessee. Are you that's finding that that's the people aren't coming out to vote? In no, Kentucky? that's not it. No, if, no, Phil, you don't that, understand no, what gerrymandering right. is. No, they right draw the lines. To some extent. Bill's right to some extent, because the last time there was a Republican governor in Kentucky, the total people who came out to vote was 32% of those registered. So that's what's happening. In some cases, that's Partly. what's happening. It, but that the gerrymandering... happens because they know their vote doesn't count. You have in Texas, like we used to have before 2010, we used to have more Democrats representing Texas in Congress than Republicans. And then... What's his name? I can't remember his name now. Rand, Rand, uh, Rand Paul? No. no, no, no. Oh. Ron Paul. You Ron know, Paul? Richards was uh, was the governor? Rick no. Perry. Long after Rick, Rick Perry. Oh, Rick, Rick Perry. Perry. Rick Perry, yeah. He was good. And then and they gerrymandered Texas so that now we have, what, six congressmen from Texas that are Democrats and like 20, 22 that are Republicans. Well, okay. we've got one in Kentucky that's a Democrat. Okay, and the other six are Republicans. And yet, the, what? Fifty-two percent of the registered voters in the state of Kentucky are Democrats. Do you understand how that happens, Phil? Uh, 
Yeah, it's democratic district. But it, but it goes both ways, you know. No, the, no it, does, it does. It doesn't. Swing. It doesn't go both ways. Yeah, the, the pendulum. No, no, will no. If the, other if the Republicans, wait a minute. Matt's, Matt's going no. Say, tell them why you you you're saying no, Matt. Well, overwhelmingly, gerrymandering has uh, benefited Republicans, and there's I don't think there's really any record of it benefiting Democrats necessarily. But if you look at swing states, if you look at red states. It's, it overwhelmingly favors Republicans. And there's a reason why it is, because they know that they can't win without gerrymandering voter suppression as well. Right. Yeah. The reason right. Is once it starts, once you <clears throat> gerrymandered, there's no way for the Democrats to get back in power to do its opposite. Well, that's what they're trying to do, uh, you know, with with the uh, Republicans, uh, uh, you know, and, and the federal level. Uh, oh, really? Like Republicans what? Republicans are going to have a like very difficult time like, getting back into power. Like what? Well, uh, well, if you listen to Trump, it's all the votes that they created and pulled out from suitcases. But without <laughs> any proof whatsoever, that's just there bullshit. Not one, uh, right. proof, not one shred of evidence to back him up. That's just bullshit. He just pulling that out of his ass because he wants to. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, I don't see where Biden got eighty, eighty or eighty-five million votes. I mean, oh my God, Obama. Well, he uh, because yeah, more people voted than normal. Yes, because I mean it's just like people. Can, we only have like fifty percent of the people but, usually voting. Not even that because nobody wanted so, to vote for ill douchebag. So little. Yeah. So during COVID, people voted more because they were at home and they could vote by mail. And so there's more voting. I mean, it's just, it's just obvious. People. Come on, and man. Also, the states, <laughs> those legislators, changed the voting rules at the last minute. Uh, to allow uh, because of COVID. because it was too dangerous to go out. And oh my God! Well, like Phil, you, Phil, you seem to forget there was a thing called COVID, and yeah, that in order to be able to allow everyone to get their vote in and still not uh, expose themselves to a very deadly disease, they made exceptions by doing mail-in voting. Are they going to retract mail in voting? No, I think they should make it the I think they should make it the law of the land if you want my opinion. I've been mail in voting for 25 years. <laughs> yeah, most people could mail in vote in a lot of states. They just had to apply for it. You the know, state I of Colorado, them. that's the only way they do voting. In fact, you did that, didn't you, Phil? I mail in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so what's so obviously you're not against mail in voting. No, it's convenient. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, and I think anything that I makes also received Two ballots. <laughs> you got two. <laughs> yeah, guess what, Bill? Well, if you had sent them both in, so, you would have committed voter fraud if you had sent them both in. You yeah, I get it. it because I don't do those. Well, kinds actually, if you mail them both in, they would have seen the duplicity and and yeah. not only. Well, the Republicans on. want the Republicans want you to think because you got two ballots, Bill, that that just that was somehow fraudulent. Yeah. And how? Do, and why do you say that if it's fraudulent? Why did only Democrats cheat? No Republicans cheated. I mean, well, according, according to your logic, by mistake, they thought I was a Democrat. <laughs> you three. See, anytime, anytime anyone brings up something logical, you just make a joke. Well, because it's yeah. not yeah. logical. Yeah, it's true. Well, yes, it is. Your fight to a logical yes, argument is a joke. Yes, it was logical. I said, why do the Republicans assume <laughs> that only Democrats cheated? That's your premise. That you're no, saying that's what the, dead, the Republicans said, assume. But I said I didn't agree with your premise that they that they, they assume that. But they do. That's what they. That's what Trump's been doing this whole time. He's well, saying that the Democrats cheated, and the uh, and the Republicans didn't. We got to take our country back. I mean, that's the whole. Yeah, argument. they're taking it back. They're sending me two ballots. I mean, Trump tried to cheat the most. He's the one who yeah. tried to change the electorate in the White House on January 6th. And called Georgia for more votes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, know, uh, 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 I've seen his personality. Yeah. Brian, Brian there, wants to there say. There's some good news. There's some good news. Did you hear the merchant of death? He sent a telegram to Trump because he says his life is in danger and he should come to Russia. Really? Who's this? The Merchant of Death. Remember the Russian guy? Oh, yeah. Guy His life is in danger. Yeah, he went on Twitter and said that he just sent a telegram to Trump because his life is in danger. He has these things going on, and he thinks he's going to be eliminated. So he Brian, said, come, in, the come to Russia. Brian, who is the Merchant of Death? 
I forget his name. He was a guy who was an arms dealer. Yeah, arms dealer. Oh, was he yeah. the guy that was released? Uh, yeah. From, yeah. The basketball yeah. The guy basketball we player. traded. Yeah. For for yeah. And, yep. and now he feels so, his life is in danger in Russia. So he wants to what? He went on Twitter and so he said, come and join us in Russia because your life is in danger. You're going to be eliminated. You have these things going on and, and the courts and now, and they say you're going to be eliminated. So who, who, please come who, and join Who's going to be eliminated? Trump. 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 Oh, Trump. Trump. Oh, okay. Trump. He uh, said, and Newsweek reported it again, but then they showed the Twitter. They showed the Twitter post. I, I wonder if uh, he's going to get banned on Twitter. Huh? Yeah. Uh, no. 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 He didn't pay for his verification. <laughs> you only get banned on Twitter if you don't like uh, those uh, cars, those electric cars. Uh, he's going to get banned on Twitter. He didn't pay for his blue check. Yeah. I mean, isn't that the only way out of Trump? The only way out of Trump? <laughs> yeah. no, him I don't, have him eliminated. Uh, yeah. No. Come on. I, I don't think that he's going to get the nomination. At least, you well, know. There's nobody, there's nobody looming uh, to begin with. I don't think DeSantis is going to run. De sanctimonious, you mean? It, it, well, that's well, a stupid name. Trump, Trump. Uh, In fact, Trump probably doesn't know what sanctimonious means. He can't spell it, that's for sure. Yeah, that's right. I always have to ask Siri. Uh, do you know who? Do you know who the leading contender for the Republican nomination was in 2008 at this time for the 2008 election? I don't Rudy know. Giuliani. Oh my God! Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh my God! Could you yeah. imagine? Things change, and they change quickly. <laughs> and don't, yeah, I mean, don't you think some of the Republicans are afraid to start getting well, you beat see, up I, and word I, I, by I, him? I, I said this last night, and I'll say it again. I think that probably is a good chance that Trump will get nominated, and here's the reason why: because the news networks are making the same mistake they made back in 2016 by just not mentioning Trump. They, nope. they gave him more publicity than he ever needed, and he knows how to get them to talk about him again. And they're falling for it. Was you know. it as negative in 2016 as it is today? Well, you know, J Josh has been very quiet tonight. Josh, do you have anything uh, on, and on this that you want to talk about? I mean, I think, you know, that I thought this morning because I was listening to something I think the current, the modern Republican Party, I mean, there are individual members within that party, right? But the current state of the Republican Party, you know, like I said the last few days that we talked or whatever about, you know, my lack of respect and all that kind of stuff. I mean, to me, they're mirroring, you know, what was the Know Nothing Party of the 1850s. I mean, that, that, that people called Know Nothings and then they took on that name and they were glad to have it. I mean, they were, they had no policies. You know, they just had grievances. Grievance. You know, they, they hated immigrants. They hated Catholics. They, they wanted isolationism. Um, they, they wanted, uh, you know, they didn't want to mess with status quo of, you know, slavery mm -hmm. and civil rights, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. they wanted popular sovereignty. Let's just let the people choose, you know? You know, let's let's let people, uh, you know, choose if they want free soil states or slave state, you know, and they look the other way when there was bleeding Kansas. I mean, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. they're they're the modern day. No, nothing party. I mean, they have no modern. Anything that they want. I mean, I don't see anything where they want to fix anything. I mean, they're more than welcome to cry about stuff or whatever, but I, I, I don't. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, they they can go on 60 Minutes and say that Joe Biden is a pedophile, but I didn't hear anything on there about fixing anybody's problems. <laughs> I mean, that's they're the Know Nothing Party of the 1850s. Yeah, and I think henceforth maybe I'll just refer to them that way. I mean, until they well, what you're saying is to being you, a political yeah. party. What you're that saying is they're not, the political process. What you're saying is they're not coming up with solutions. But they yeah. have they have they're not even coming up with except a... whipping people up. I mean that's that's the name of their game, you know. I mean that they do not want to govern. Right. They they just take whatever they are hearing that people are frustrated with 
and rather than fix it, they exploit it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, like I said, that that's that's how you know the same thing in the 1850s. We don't we don't need all these fucking Irish and all these other people coming over here and take your jobs. No, and then you know, like I said, we want to we want a popular sovereignty, and we want you know. We don't need all these Catholics. We don't need all these Jews. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's, you know, we don't need to send money anywhere. We don't need to help anyone. We don't need a Navy. We don't need a standing army. We, we, and, we and, just, and, and, I mean, and, you know. And, and short of that, what you do is you create a xenophobia. You know, you make people afraid of other people, of people on foreign soils. Well, that seems you know. to be their platform. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, what are they for other than well, come up well, with some, takes a nap yeah. every day or what? Well, I mean, yeah, but come like up, but come up. What, what you're what, saying what is come, come up with solutions. Maybe I'll start listening to you. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see any of them engaging in any or at least thing. at least be able to identify mm -hmm. the problems, you know. But what you're saying is they just complain, 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 and it's fear mongering. Yeah, I mean, I don't, fear. I don't see any of them in a policy debate anywhere. Are the Democrats? Do I the mean, Democrats do this at all? I mean, they go through periods where they have certain people that I think are, you know, wine asses and clowns, you know, and I think yeah. I come on here and say that, you know, but I think that they have overwhelmingly far more people who have policy that they would like to institute and they certainly do not broach these ideas of you know hatred and um the unwillingness to accept listening to other people and the exploitation of fear and violence and all that i mean like i said i think they got a couple clowns who do but again those mm -hmm. are members of the party not the party but I seriously see the problem with the Republican Party as pretty much endemic to the party. Do you think what they're doing is they're they're sentencing themselves to extinction? I don't think it'll be that, but I think they're they're gonna yeah. have to start over, you know. Matt I mean Matt, Matt has his hand up. Um this might be a little off topic, but I was just gonna ask does anyone think they're gonna impeach Clarence Thomas? Well, I, I knew you were gonna bring up Clarence Thomas for some reason. I think I they think won't I think he will be asked to resign by the other members of the court. I really think so. I think that what he did was was diminishes the efficacy of the of the court. Yeah. Uh, I heard that accepting personal trips and things like that is not uh, an offense. Now they may make it one in the future, but it, it's, it's not, not. It's not ethical. No, it's, not, it's not an still, offense, still, but it's yeah. not ethical. Not against the rule. But I mean, it's, it's pretty ethical. obvious why it's not ethical. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, why couldn't he accept a plane ride from a friend? Well, it was uh, many uh, plane uh, rides uh, over uh, many 20, years. 20, 20 years worth of plane rides and boat and rides and, and money and money to his wife's uh, five, $500,000 to his wife's uh, 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 fund or whatever. Uh, I'd say that's a little more than just a couple of trips, okay? Because yeah. he's a judge, Phil, and he's supposed to be impartial. He's supposed and to so be So if somebody impartial. gives you millions of dollars millions of benefits, of dollars. Yeah. you get benefits for years and years and years from this And there's person. nothing illegal about it, Phil. Nothing illegal, but it is unethical. Well, yeah, yeah but you, you, don't, you don't have to yeah. resign over that if they make the, if they make the I think rule. he should. And, and what the problem was, it was a personal trip, right. and he didn't declare it. Not a trip. Not a trip. It was over twenty not years. Not a trip, it Phil. It, it was. They were personal. It was what may be hundreds of trips. Yeah, it was a hell of a lot. Yeah. Personal. Anyway, we've got to go, it, Phil. We're running out of time here. You don't have to here. declare it. We're, wow. You don't well, have to declare it. We're talking about ethics, Phil. Oh. Anyway, uh, well, we expect. No I'm sorry. Amazing. I'm sorry if we expect our judges to be ethical. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Kevin. Are. Kevin. Nice seeing you here, pal. Uh, uh, same thing to you, uh, Charlie Wallace, you old scamp. Uh, Josh, <laughs> thank you for being here. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Alan, same to you. Vernon Nunn, great to have you here. Brian Neary, Tony, uh, Ray, always good to have you here. Matt, call more often. You're terrific. You're really terrific. You're a nice addition to the Citizen Panel. 
And, of course, uh, thank you very much, Phil. You added very nicely to tonight's show. Everybody, uh, would you like to give a big wave goodbye? And I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not a crook. That's the citizen <laughs> panel. And they're going away. And I'm going away. Until Monday, we'll be back for the, uh, for the um, um, uh, what do you call it, the pop-up show. Uh, that'll be at 4 o'clock on them. Um, we'll run it on Facebook. And uh, then we'll be back again on Wednesday and with a special guest, our old friend from San Francisco, used to be part of my crew, my cast, uh, Chuck Farnham will be with us. I'll see you again then. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, I'll see you. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, I, I'll try to remember how I finish my show. Uh, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Have a nice weekend. Bye.